Twice in my life I've had the frightening experience of being on boards of directors. Both times I had opportunity to be the chairman of the boards. I found it to be very frightening because I realized that I'm making decisions that have far-reaching consequences, affecting a lot of lives. One of those institutions was a large mission agency, sending missionaries to every continent of the world, involving thousands of people. You feel the weight of all of that when decisions have to be made. You have just been watching a drama from Bethesda Baptist Church, and this drama depicts the human soul as though it were a board of directors. And there are a lot of similarities. Because uh, as a board of directors has to gather information and put everything together before making vital decisions, so does the human soul and heart. We have to take all the facts. We have to take our memories. We have to consider our conscience. We have to consider the pressure from outside. And all these things come together to make that final, ultimate decision. But that decision can have great consequences, huge consequences sometimes far beyond this life. My name is Ron Grave. I'm interim pastor at Bethesda Baptist Church, and I'm so glad to be able to share with you a few things from God's Word. One of the most important decisions that a man ever has to make is a decision of what to do with Jesus Christ, who called himself the Son of the living God. In John chapter 3, Jesus has some startling words, and I want you to listen to them. He starts by a very familiar verse, John 3, 16, saying that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. And then he goes on to say that he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who believes not is condemned already. Now those are stern words. Condemned already? The problem is, as you saw in this movie, that we are condemned because we are all sinners. God laid out his simple commandments for our benefit, and he told us to obey them, but none of us do. Every one of us has become a lawbreaker, and therefore, when it comes to the final judgment, it'll be a time of standing there already condemned because of our attitudes, our actions, our disposition. But God doesn't want to condemn us, and that's why Christ said he was sent into this world. God loved us enough that he sent Christ to come and to be a sacrifice for our sins, to pay for our sins on the cross as he took all of our sins upon himself, and there he died in misery. Three days later, he rose again from the dead, ascended back into heaven, and the promise is that he's going to come and establish his everlasting kingdom for his own family one of these days. But in order to be a part of that family, in order to be a part of that kingdom, you must deal with this matter of condemnation. How does it work out? Well, we stand condemned before God because we have sinned. Jesus came into the world and lived a perfectly righteous life that pleased the Father in every respect. And then when it came to Calvary, Jesus went to the cross, and God laid on him the iniquities of us all. Jesus paid the price, my sins and all of your sins. Now it's a matter of believing in Jesus. He said, if you come and believe in me, you will have everlasting life. There will be no condemnation. And so the choice is every human soul's to make. If they make the choice, I believe in Jesus, they'll have everlasting life. But if they make the choice, I don't believe in Jesus, then they're already condemned. Could I encourage you, right where you are, to shut the, the distractions of life out for just a moment, quiet your heart, perhaps even close your eyes, and just talk to God, and as you do, you could pray to him from your own heart in such a way that he would do exactly what he promises to any sinner who would repent of his sins and call upon Christ in faith. Just do this. Quietly pray. Oh God, I know that I am a sinner, and I know that I've broken your laws. I do believe that Jesus was sent to die for my sins, and I do believe that when I put my faith in him, 
and trust him as my personal savior. He will forgive me. He'll pardon all my condemnation. And he'll come into my life with everlasting life. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. My friend, if you prayed that and sincerely meant it, God has done his part. He's brought you to Christ, and he's allowed Christ to come into your life. You will sense a marvelous difference. You'll never be the same again. I would encourage you to call the church or stop by. Come visit us, because we can be of real help to you at a time like this in your life. If you don't go to a Bible-believing church, please come and see us sometime. But the most important thing of all is that you can now know that you're not condemned any longer, but that you stand as a forgiven child of God's. God bless you.